Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a neurotransmitter that is dopamine. So dopamine is actually an immediate metabolic precursor of norepinephrine. So it is immediate precursor of norepinephrine. As we know, when there is production of uh, norepinephrine, before that, tyrosine is being entered into the adrenergic neuron and that tyrosine is being converted into uh, dopa. And then this dopa is being converted into dopamine. And further, this dopamine is converted into norepinephrine, which is then methylated into epinephrine if required. So, this is how norepinephrine is formed and, and dopamine is immediate precursor of norepinephrine. Naturally, it also occurs in CNS as neurotransmitter. So, it occurs as neurotransmitter in CNS in the basal ganglia. So, over there, it functions as neurotransmitter as well as in adrenal medulla. Over there, it also acts as neurotransmitter. So, Dopamine can activate both alpha as well as beta receptors. At higher doses, it causes vasoconstriction by activating alpha 1. So, by the activation of alpha 1, when dopamine binds to alpha 1, there is cause of vasoconstriction. This binding of alpha 1 happens when dopamine is taken in higher doses whereas when it is taken in lower doses it shows or it stimulates beta 1 uh, cardiac receptors at lower doses. In addition to these receptors dopamine also bind to D1 and D2 receptors. D1 and D2 receptors distinct, distinct from alpha and beta adrenergic receptors and they occur in peripheral mesentric and renal vascular beds. Now, mesentric arteries are those arteries which are distributing blood to the gastrointestinal tract by the division of aorta. So, and renal arteries are or vascular beds are those which are supplying blood to kidney. So, it is present over there. Their binding to dopamine produce vasodilation. So, when there is binding of dopamine to these receptors, it causes vasodilation. So, we need to remember different effects which are being caused by dopamine. <coughs> like over here, dopamine is causing vasodilation because of the binding to D1 or D2 receptors. Whereas, dopamine is causing vasoconstriction when it is binding to a power receptor. So, D2 receptors are also found on presynaptic adrenergic neuron where their activation interferes with norepinephrine release. So, when D2 receptors have dopamine as agonist on presynaptic adrenergic neuron, it can interfere with norepinephrine release. So these are different 
binding sites and binding effects of dopamine. So next, if we talk about the actions which are being caused by dopamine. So first of all, let's talk about cardiovascular effects or actions which are being caused by dopamine. So dopamine exerts a stimulatory effect on heart, having a positive inotropic and positive chronotropic effect. Over here there is binding of dopamine to beta 1 receptor which are actually cardiac receptor at lower doses. So this is happening at lower doses. At very high doses of dopamine, dopamine can activate alpha 1 receptors and cause vasoconstriction which we have studied over here. At our higher doses, it causes vasoconstriction, whereas at lower doses, it causes cardiac stimulation. So, it can cause positive uh, inotropic, that is, uh, strengthening of contractility of heart muscles, and positive chronotropic effect means there is increase in the contraction rate of the heart. So, vasoconstriction because of alpha, whereas these two effects are because of beta, beta 1 and alpha 1. So next, if we talk about the renal and visceral actions of dopamine. Dopamine dilate renal and splanchic arterioles by activating dopaminergic receptors, thereby increasing the blood flow to the kidney. So there is increase of renal supply of the blood. So by the activation of dopaminergic receptors, as we have previously studied that they are present on renal vascular pairs. So the activation of them cause vasodilation and when there is vasodilation there will be obviously increase in blood flow because of the vasodilatory effect. Not only to kidney but also to viscera. These receptors are not affected by alpha and beta blocking agents. And why it is so? Because these have not affinity for such blocking agents. These are dopaminergic receptors. These are not adrenergic receptors. Therefore, dopamine is used clinically in the treatment of shock in which there is significant increase of sympathetic activity. Because when someone is in shock, he is having increased sympathetic activity. That is, there is fight, flight responses being going on in that patient's body. So, in such condition, there might be compromise of renal blood flow. So, in such cases, we can give dopamine to the patient because dopamine can cause increased blood flow to kidney and viscera and thereby decreasing the sympathetic activity or sympathetic response which can cause kidney function being compromised. So now if we talk about the therapeutic uses of this agent. This agent that is dopamine is a drug of choice for cardiogenic and septic shock and it is given in continuous infusion form it raises blood pressure by stimulating beta 1 receptors on the heart and increase cardiac output because over here we have learned that this stimulation will cause increased cardiac 
output as we have learned over here. So, in addition to this, it enhances perfusion to kidney and splanking areas as described previously. Increased blood flow to kidney enhances the glomerular filtration rate. As we know, when there is increased blood supply to the kidney, there will be much more filtration going on in the glomerulus. And this causes diuresis. In this regard, dopamine is far superior than that of norepinephrine. And why it is so? Because blood supply to kidney may diminish in case of norepinephrine and this can cause renal shutdown so this is the reason why do dopamine is being preferred over norepinephrine it is also used to treat hypotension and severe cardiac failure Primarily in patients with normal or lower peripheral vascular resistance. So now if we talk about the adverse effects which are being caused by overdoses of dopamine. So dopamine can cause effects similar to those of sympathetic stimulation. Other than that, dopamine is rapidly metabolized by MAO and COMT that is monomine oxidase and catechol or methyl transferases and therefore they have short-lived adverse effects such as nausea, hypertension and arrhythmias. Such adverse effects are short-lived because of their rapid metabolism. So this was all about dopamine. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching my videos.